Hello there, I'm Kobe Stanzik, and I'm one of the creative technologists here at Protopi. And today I wanna to walk you through how to best use Figma and Protopi together. So our goal is simple, to create a seamless workflow between the two. I'm gonna break it down into four steps. Our first step is getting the Protopi plugin working in Figma, which is easier than assembling IKEA furniture. Then we'll move on to when to jump from Figma designs into Protopi prototypes. After that, we'll cover exactly how Protopi handles your Figma elements, so there's no surprises. And then lastly, we will cover two best practices that are practically cheat codes for a faster workflow. All right, let's dive right inside Figma. With our designs open, the first step is to launch the Protopi plugin. And you can go searching for the Protopi plugin in the Actions tab, or you can use Command K or Control K on Windows to pull up the Actions tab and then simply type Protopi. With the plugin open, we just select the frames we want to bring over. So we'll grab our login screen and our home screen. With our frame selected, all we have to do now is hit export. And just like that, our designs are now in Protopi, with every single layer perfectly set as they were in Figma. We're not done there. We also can bring over specified objects from Figma to Protopi. Simply make sure your object is inside your existing scene you've already sent over. Make sure it is labeled as object in the plugin panel and then simply hit export, and your object will be sent into your existing scene in Protopi. There's one more item on our dropdown, which is flattened, but I'll make sure we get back to that on step three. So we've covered the basics of our plugin. Let's move to step two, when we should jump from Figma to Protopi. So when do you make the jump? When do you trade in your world of Smart Animate in Figma for a more powerful experience in Protopi? For me, I've identified four key signifiers that I use to jump my work into Protopi. The first being conditional logic. Figma is great for linear flows, but when you really need your prototype to think, that's where Protopi shines. So think of a login screen. You can type in the correct password and you can move on to the next scene, which is great. But if you want to double up on use cases, you can also have the same login screen display a error message. Or you could add a vine boom sound to scare your users when they get it wrong. Utilizing conditional logic like this helps you speed up how fast you can prepare your edge cases in your designs. My next signifier is dynamic inputs. Think of anything where your user actually needs to type in your designs. That's when you jump over to Protopi. So think search bars, login forms, calculators, anything and everything where your prototype needs to respond to what a user is actually typing not just where they're tapping on the screen. Our third is device sensors. What if you want to actually tap into the hardware on your phone for your prototypes? With Protopi, you can do just that. You can access the camera, microphone, and accelerometer. You can even use the gyroscope to create interactive parallax effects as the user tilts their phone, which is a great way to make your prototype feel more alive. And finally, we have multi-device prototyping. Protopi is your go-to for any experiences that need to span multiple devices. So think two devices talking with each other, say a phone with another phone, or gamepad and TV, anything Internet of Things, or even automotive with car steering wheels connecting to live displays. So again, our four signifiers are conditional logic, dynamic inputs, device sensors, and multi-device prototypes. Now on to step three, handling Figma elements in Protopi. Now this next step is important. There are a couple of things that are different in Protopi than in Figma when you import over your designs, so knowing these ahead of time will make you feel like a genius. Let's first talk about text and vectors. By default, they'll come in as flat bitmaps for performance, which means they're uneditable, which is great until you realize you want to change one of the properties. Say you left a typo in your Figma design. There it is, staring back at you. From your otherwise perfect design. Your first instinct might be to panic, go back into Figma, fix it, and re-import everything. But there's an easier way. In Protopi, all you have to do is select your typo-ridden layer and click the magic Make Editable button. Protopi will remember all the properties corresponding to that layer from back in Figma, so this way I can change my text with all of the properties intact. Next, a quick note on effects. Things like gradients, inner shadow, layer blur, and background blur are all currently not supported in Protopi, which is why our video is doing this. Give me one second. There we go, much better. So as shown there, either make your designs in Figma without those properties to begin with, or pro tip here, flatten those layers on export. That way the visual appearance is perfectly preserved. 
Note, these flattened layers are ideally your non-dynamic layers. So think background layers or layers that you don't need to set up for with interactions. Finally, step four, best practices. All right, let's land this plane with two of the best practices that will make it feel like you've been using ProtoPy for years. First off, condense your flows. Conventional Figma prototyping is multiple scenes for one flow. While this is still possible in ProtoPy, it's actually much more optimal to condense your flows down to the needed scenes you're working with. This way, as you build out your dynamic triggers and responses, instead of having to jump around between all of your scenes, you're only focused on your key scenes you're working with. Next, name your layers. Good naming in Figma is a lifesaver in ProtoPy. When you're setting up triggers, you can search for any layer by name, which means you're spending time prototyping instead of just scrolling looking for those layers between the midst of frames 1820s if you never had good naming to begin with. Let's recap. We've covered a ton today. First, we went over how to use the ProtoPy plugin to instantly export your designs. We then talked about the key signifiers for when to move from Figma to ProtoPy for things like logic, inputs, sensors, and multi-device experiences. We also covered how ProtoPy handles text, vectors, and effects. And then lastly, we went over two of the key best practices in condensing your flows and good naming conventions. By connecting these two tools, you're not just designing anymore, you're building experiences. And that's an overview of how to work with Figma and ProtoPy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go name some layers.